If a patient has no underlying rhythm or their underlying rhythm is very slow, it is often important to change the pacemaker mode for surgery to keep them safe. The modes of choice are asynchronous pacing modes. The pacemaker modes of choice are AOO, VOO or DOO. And let me explain why. Firstly, let's have a recap of the mode code. So if we look at position 1, we can see this is the chamber that is paced. So in a, a VOO device, we would be pacing in the ventricles. In an AOO device, the atrium. And a DOO, we would be pacing in both. Now column 2 is the chamber that we are sensing in. So in a VOO, AOO or a DOO device, we are not sensing in any chamber. We are also not responding to any sensed event. Well, really, if we're not sensing it, how can we respond to it anyway? So this is literally what those mode codes mean. We are pacing, we are not sensing, and because of that, we are unable to respond to sensing anyway. Let's have a look at VOO in action. The first thing I want you to notice is that on this electrogram we have P waves and we have QRS complexes and there is no relationship between the two. Remember the pacemaker isn't sensing. There's no way it can ensure that we have synchronization of the atrial and ventricular events. I also want you to know what is happening in the ventricles. So here we have an output pulse delivered by the pacemaker triggering a ventricular depolarization. This can be seen again here and once more here. Now all of a sudden we get a premature ventricular complex and we can see this by this QRS here. Now it hasn't been seen by the pacemaker. Remember the pacemaker is not sensing, it's just pacing and it's doing so at 60 beats per minute in this example. So exactly one second after this output pulse, it is going to deliver another output pulse regardless. And it does just this. So the output pulse is delivered, but the tissue is refractory, so it is unable to trigger a ventricular depolarization. In a previous lesson, I mentioned how delivering a pacing output pulse into tissue that is refractory or repolarizing can be potentially dangerous, and we'll come on to that later. I just wanted to also show you DOO in action, again at 60 beats per minute. Now this time, please notice that there is a relationship between atrial depolarization and the ventricular depolarization. And that can be seen again here and here. But look what happens again in the presence of a premature ventricular complex. Here we have the atrial output pulse, which may or may not have triggered depolarization. We can't actually see that. It's masked by this QRS complex. But again, this hasn't been registered by the pacemaker. It's not been sensed. And for this reason, the pacing output pulse is still delivered. And we can see that actually, in these modes, the output pulses are always delivered in perfect timing, and that never changes. So what is so handy about these modes? Well, if we think about surgery, there is a greater risk, especially with diathermy, of oversensing, and if we pick up this diathermy, it can confuse the pacemaker into thinking that some of the heart's tissue is depolarizing and cause it to withhold pacing. Now in this example, with the pacemaker set DOO for surgery, some diathermy has been used and we have some electromagnetic interference. However, because of the mode, it completely ignores all of the interference and instead we still maintain a nice paced rhythm and so it doesn't jeopardize the cardiac output. We ensure that the heart continues to contract during surgery. Earlier to this lesson I alluded to how there are some potential dangers with asynchronous pacing. One of those risks 
is because it doesn't sense any events, there is the potential for it to deliver an output pulse into a T wave. Now, this can be called a shock on T. Now, when an output pulse is delivered into the ventricles, when they are repolarizing, so during a T wave, it can actually trigger a ventricular arrhythmia. And those ventricular arrhythmias are really quite dangerous. In this example, it has triggered ventricular fibrillation. So just be mindful of this when programming a pacemaker into an asynchronous mode, so AOO, VOO, or DOO. And this risk is the reason that we only use these modes when we have to. It is also the reason we program them on immediately before surgery and as soon as we can afterwards, we like to put the pacemaker back into a normal mode. This ensures that the patient spends the minimum amount of time in asynchronous pacing and reduces these risks. So, your takeaway message? If a patient is having surgery and they have no underlying rhythm, then an asynchronous pacing mode is the safest choice.